Welcome back to another Cheapo Multimeter Review. That's right, it is Cheapo time in the nation. In the spotlight today. No, that's just weird. No, in the spotlight today, we've got the all new sun. Not that sun. The all sun. That's right, it's the all sun EM3252 auto ranging meter. And let's see if it's. The all sun ships in a bubble protecting wrap kind of a box. Um, it's okay. Not a whole lot of protection. This was actually half out when I received the uh, initial meter. But that being said, it made it in transit okay. The meter itself is quite tiny, quite diminutive in size. And it is designated as an auto-ranging meter per se, although it is not um, completely auto-ranging because you do have a couple of um, manual selections such as capacitance and continuity. Now this meter does not do diode, so for all our diode fans, sorry! Yeah, but we'll check out what it can do and we'll see if it's worth the money. Speaking of money, it doesn't cost a lot for this guy, about $20 Canadian, 16, 17 US, but you know what? Is it any good? Let's find out. Now one thing a little started with this meter is the fact that it has a lot of glare on that screen. That can be problematic if you're outside doing your thing, it's gonna be hard to read. There is no backlight on this meter, so you're really at the mercy of the display gods. Display gods, yeah. Start by turning on the meter, you press down on the big yellow button, hear that beep, and you are instantly in auto range mode. When you turn on the meter for the first time, you're greeted with the auto range mode with these four display segments. Now, this is an auto ranging meter, but to a degree. That's because it will not do capacitance without your intervention. Hit the button once, and you see this. This actually stands for continuity. So when resistance is less than 150 ohms, you are basically in continuity mode. Now, continuity mode is a little weird. Um, basically, the resistance is less than about 50 ohms, the built-in buzzer will sound continuously and the display will change. Resistance is more than 150 ohms, the buzzer will not sound and the display will show what we have just seen. Now, if the resistance between 50 ohms and 150 ohms, the buzzer may or may not sound and the display will change with the buzzer's, buzzer's behavior. Really? <sighs> it's actually all in there. A little bit painful, so... Uh... You also have manual selections as well. You can go from voltage AC, DC into your ohms mode, frequency, and capacitance. Ergonomically speaking, it's okay. The button itself does have um, not the greatest tactile sensibilities about it. So sometimes you really have to push it. Other times you barely have to touch it. Mm, sounds like my first girlfriend. But anyway, that being said, it seems to function, for the most part, relatively well. You can also see here there's a fair amount of strain relief at the bottom of the unit. That's because those probes are permanently attached, much like my mother-in-law. Now the Allsun does have a relay inside of it. Fairly noisy and... Eh. In the long run, is that going to last or is it going to be problematic? Um, now, we have seen in the past that some relays are affected by magnetism. And you know what? Let's pull out a magnet. Where are you, Mr. Magnet? Oh, my gosh. We are so color-coordinated today, aren't we, folks? Well, let's see if we have any ill effects putting the magnet on the ulcer. You can actually hear that relay clicking. So there's definitely an interaction now between the magnet and the relay. Is it affecting the range switch per se? In auto mode, no. Let's try standard mode. No, so other than the um, uh, magnetization effect itself really seems to have no ill effect 
on the All Sun. All right, first up is DC Accuracy Mode. Now we are in the auto range setting. And as you can see, it is unable to figure out what the hell a millivolt is. So let's just take it onto the 2.5 volt setting, see if we have any better luck. It is thinking. And there we go, 2.50, pretty well spot on on the voltage side. So in auto range, it cannot find that 250 millivolts, but no issues with the 2.5. As you can see, it is a really tiny little meter, it weighs really next to nothing. It takes a couple of those little button cells. I put in a couple of these alkalines. This did not ship with any batteries per se. It takes two of them. Um, very, very tiny. Now we do have that nice feel in the hand. My biggest full pile with the meter is the fact that, I mean, the leads are permanently attached. Now, I did neglect to mention that do ship with a little case. That's right. A little pouch. A little pouch. It's kind of nice. And it can fit in there with relative ease. As you can see, you can store the leads. And, you know, you just kind of like, just get it all in there. There we go. Close it up. And you could there is no tilt stand with this all sun, so it's always going to be laying flat. So you're pretty well going to be looking down on this meter. Yeah, we've got to look down on you. Don't take it to heart. Next up, it's high voltage timing. Yes, I've given up with this despair, and I've just helped, got Mr. Rich Meters to help us out a little bit here as a tilt stand. All right, we're going to see if we can break that 600 volt barrier without blowing up the meter. Here we go. So we're getting the over voltage alert and looking good. Let's try it one more time. Looking good. So we're definitely getting that high voltage indicator and it does not seem to be doing anything nasty with the meter. So it did survive the high voltage test. Now the shroud on these leads is a bit of a pain. It's in there really, really well. Now it looks like it comes off. Um, so I'm gonna have to do some yanking and let's see if it actually comes I've spent off. the better part of a minute trying to get this off. And you know, it is coming off, it looks like, but it is so problematic. Now, I've spent the better part of about four or five minutes now, and I've tried to be very careful with this, and I'm still damaging those shrouds. Really, I have no choice because this just does not want to come off. And I am trying, oh, so delicately. Come on, come on. Oh, gosh. Well, I finally managed to get the tip off after a painful six or seven minutes and it probably... I'm getting the impression that this is perhaps supposed to stay on because it looks like it's kind of messed up. Alrighty, so AC voltage is next. As you can see, 122 volts. Um, it is a little painful once again with all that shrouding. You've really got to stick it in there. So, eh. Next, we're gonna try capacitance. Now remember, this only has a lousy 100 microfarad capacitance. I am gonna hit the button till we get into capacitance. There we are. It will only do the auto ranging for resistance or voltage. So you still have to use the select button to get to the other ranges. Okay, we should be looking at 3.3 microfarad. Two point resistance, seven, and we've got a 0.5 ohm resistor. Try this again. All right, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.9. So it is having trouble at that uh, range. So to navigate the function, once it is on, you can go from AC to DC volts into um, frequency, resistance, and capacitance. And it brings you back into your auto range mode for voltage and resistance. It has that very interesting, annoying beep. And you hear that relay clicking all the time. 
Wow. Continuity time is next. Here we go. What? Oh my god. It's latched, but it is like... Oh, probably the worst continuity I have yet to encounter. Oh my gosh, complete, complete garbage. And if you're just yearning to know the decibel rating, 73.6 decibels. Alrighty, get inside. We have one Phillips screw and we just move the shroud of the leads up a little bit and it pops off like so. On this side, really not a heck of a lot going on. Um, pretty messy though. There's a lot of flux all over the place and not the cleanest looking PCB I have seen, that's for sure. There's our two button cells. Now remember this meter does not do current uh, of any sort, not even milliamps, so there is nothing in terms of current protection. At the top of the unit here we see the NCV that is built into the PCB. Over here we have the Texas Instruments uh, dual op amp, the 27L2C, 7AM AC24. Pretty well it in terms of this side of the PCB. Let's flip it around and see what we find. All right, we're gonna flip this guy around and, whoa! Hey, I was not expecting that. Oh, well, there's our uh, relay right at the bottom here. That's that clicking sound going on. That is what is uh, changing those ranges on the fly. And will you look at that? We've got a couple of shrouded PTCs on the voltage side of things. Transistor or on-off switch, the, um, Oscillator, which has uh, got a lot of goop on it. Yeah, the IC is cobbed. Hmm, interesting. So, you know, a lot more here on this side. I really wasn't expecting to see this. So, hey, all of a sudden, you did a decent job of things. Now, it's too bad about this relay. It is really loud, and it seems to take a long time to switch those ranges. So that is a little on the problematic side of things. And on my mistake, that is a, uh, looks like a, an inductor or a coil, actually. Closing thoughts on the Allsun EM3252. Walk on by. Yeah, unfortunately, Allsun missed the mark yet again with this multimeter. It just does not have any sizzle. Auto ranging, pooey. This is slow, painful, and don't even get me started on that relay. Loud and obnoxious. The probes, yeah. Why, oh, why are they shrouded the way they are? Yeah. Now you can do a lot better than the Allsun EM3252. If we look at the inside, the internals, that at least was acceptable. In fact, it was actually quite good. But generally speaking, what good is it when you have a meter that is so bad? The Allsun EM3252 gets a sour two out of five stars. Hope you enjoyed this review, everybody. Until the next time, keep on testing.